All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we're going to finish out the systems unit um, this week. Today, you're going to see some word problems for three by three problems and practice some of those. Um, and then we'll probably get some practice in tomorrow again. Uh, get you an answer key involved so you can check your work. Um, and then we'll test sometime this week over systems. You'll be able to use your calculator to solve all of the systems. You will just need to be able to make sure that you can write them out from the word problems um, and solve using your calculator. Uh, there are a couple different steps that we'll see in here, but uh, we'll get started. So we're gonna be solving three by three word problems, which means three variables with three unknowns uh, and three equations, all right? So this says, a theater sells uh, three types of tickets, general admission tickets, senior citizen tickets, and children tickets. Uh, Mark bought nine general admission, two senior citizen tickets, and three child tickets, and paid $170. Sarah bought five general admin, four senior, and seven children's tickets for $173. And then Kyle bought four general admin, uh, one senior citizen, and six children's tickets and paid this much money. So they're giving us three examples of almost the exact same thing. We just need to make sure we're writing them out correctly. Find the cost of each type. Okay, so in here, first we need, where can I put this? Let's put this, let's just make get rid of it. Put it right there for now. Okay, um, so first you should be defining your variables. It says the cost, make sure you're identifying the cost. Um, so as you go through, our variables are the cost of a general admission ticket, the cost of a senior citizen ticket, and the cost of a children's ticket. So it is about cost. We're getting money values out, right? Um, and in general, we're gonna be doing the cost times uh, the number will give us our total amount for that, right? Um, so we'll go through there. And then uh, if those are my variables, we need to write the equations based on these three things. Go back over here. This is annoying. I'll maybe close that. Oh, well. Um, so this is, I think, our most straightforward example. You'll see one or two like this for sure on an assessment. Um, I think it's as straightforward as it gets. Um, there are three examples just given your three variables um, with a total amount. So the first one, if you're looking in here, um, is... <laughs> The first thing we're looking at, we see that we have nine general admission tickets times the cost of general admission, G, and two senior citizens times this, the cost of senior citizens, S, and three children's tickets times the cost of children's tickets should give us our total 170. Boom. Okay, do it again. We see that Sarah's equation should look like this. She has five general admission, four seniors, that's 4S, plus two children's tickets, 7C. Excuse me, two, I said two, that's a seven. 7C seven equals 173, great. And finally, the third one's in the same order. It says four general admissions, 4G, one senior ticket, 1S, six children's tickets, 6C for a total of 116. Okay, hopefully that should be pretty straightforward. These, This example is all, hey, here's your stuff. Um, this example is the same as this example is the same as this example. They're all in order. They're all talking about your three variables. Um, nothing really that wild happens. So then we need to take these values and plug them into our uh, our matrix, our table down here. So once again, you're just taking these almost exactly as you see them, nine, nine, two, two, three, three, 170. 170. That's the first row. I'm just dropping our variables, our addition signs, and our equal signs. So you won't won't take um, those. You won't take the equals. Uh, we're not taking variables or equal signs. Just what we have here. Okay. All right. And then same thing. Five, five, four, four, seven, seven. Okay. And then from there. So then you're just plugging this into your calculator. Um, if you don't remember how to do that, I will be linking um, just where you found this video right next to it. There should be a link of um, how to plug them into your calculator if you forgot over the long weekend, which I imagine many of you did. So rewatch that. Uh, just remember you're going to the matrix menu, you're editing your matrices, and then you're going over to math in that matrix menu and finding RREF and applying it to one of your things. If you do so, uh, you should get that this is uh, 1350 
it'll say 13.5, but right, that's money for general admission. So 13.5 means $13.50 for a general admission ticket, uh, 11.50 for a senior citizen ticket, and 8.50 for a children's ticket. So that is our fairly straightforward example on here. Um, the next two, be a little bit more confusing. The second one actually isn't too bad, and then the third one's definitely a little weird, but we got to talk about a couple things in it. Okay, nice yellow screen. All right, this one says Jamie has a collection of 78 nickels. So they're telling us that's, uh, sorry, 78 nickels, dimes, and quarters. So that's the total number of nickels, dimes, and quarters, and it's all worth 1240. Okay, cool, that's some information. If the number of quarters is doubled, okay, so we got something going on with quarters. If we double just the number of quarters, the value becomes 2215. How many of each type of coin does Jamie have? Okay, cool. So there's a bunch going on here, and this is, I think, less straightforward because it's not like, hey, one, two, three for Tommy, one, two, three for Sarah, one, two, three for Jimmy, and then just write them out, right? We got quarters, nickels, and dimes. Anytime you have money, you know we're going to have to use the fact that a nickel is worth five cents, a dime is worth 10 cents, and a quarter is worth 25 cents, right? That's implied information that we should expect to use. If we're talking about uh, money, we should imagine that we're going to use the amount of money kind of in there for those. Um, and then uh, we'll have to use that there's a, this many total, and we'll have to use kind of these two different scenarios with two different amounts of money, right? Okay, so in general, we know that we should do our variables. This, I ended up not having a room up here, so I didn't really use that, but it was hard to copy out. So uh, the question is how many, right? So we're not dealing with money anymore. We're not dealing with like the last example is how much is each of these uh, cost. Now we're saying how many of each of these, how many nickels, how many dimes and how many quarters. Uh, I used N, D, and Q. If you used X, Y, and Z for every single one of these, you'd be fine. You're more than welcome to do that. I kind of like using the variables uh, for what they represent because then it reminds me at the end what I'm talking about. Um, but either way, N, D, and Q for me, if you used X, Y, and Z for every problem, once again, it'd be fine. All right, so we need to write a couple equations. Once again, anytime you see nickels, dimes, quarters, or anything like that, um, you should be expecting to use their monetary value that we already know, kind of that assumed value that a dime is worth 10 cents. You should expect to use that in some of your equations, okay? Specifically, we know that the di nickels, dimes, and quarters, if you take how much money they are and you add that all together, it is 1240, okay? So here's how this is gonna look. Five cents, remember 0 0.05, not 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would be 50, so 0 0.05, times the number of nickels, because that's how much nickels are worth. So the amount nickels are worth times the number of nickels should give me that money. Plus 0 0.10, 10 cents, dimes times their dimes, 0 0.1 times dimes, plus 0.25, that's 25 cents, times the number of quarters, because that's how much each quarter is worth, should give me my total. Boom. Cool. Okay, so each of these nickels times the amount of nickels are worth, dimes times the number of dimes are worth, and uh, quarters. And remember, every time you're using money, you got to use decimal equivalents of those. Okay, so then the second part, though, just like this, says if the number of quarters is doubled. So I just need to essentially be saying, well, what if I had twice as many Qs, right? I'm doubling the number of quarters. I'm doubling the Qs in here. How? What happens if I had twice as many Qs. So what would that look like? Well, we're not changing nickels and we're not changing dimes, so we're gonna change the amount of quarters. So that would say something like this. Well, nickels, number of nickels times the amount of nickels, same thing, number of dimes times the dimes. But I just put a two Q here, right? Because I didn't want regular amounts of Q, I wanted twice as many, if I doubled my quarters, if I had twice as many quarters. How could I show that? Well, twice as many in these word problems, or these equations would be two times Q. Essentially, whatever Q was, however many quarters we have, if I double it, times it by two, and then multiply it, obviously, by how much quarters are worth, because we still need to get it to money, we'd have this much money, okay? So they might say something like that. If I double my quarters, or if I have, uh, if maybe it would say, if I had 10 times the number of dimes, oh, that'd be a lot. What if it said 10 more than the number of dimes? I would say D plus 10. So you're going to have to make some decisions, um, use some of those keywords from our um, vocabulary that we've been using in word problems for the last four years, right? Um, but it says twice as many quarters. So we said 2Q here. 
Okay. And we'll deal with that. You'll see these arrows. Uh, I'm going to get those together. So we do that. And then the last one says, wait a minute. I have this many total. If they give you a total, if you, once again, if you look for how many of each, anytime you see how many of each, they're likely going to tell you the total total and have you break it down into how much is each one worth. So if they give me the total total, I know that the number of nickels plus the number of dimes plus the number of quarters should give me a total of 78, right? So that'll say the number of nickels plus the number of dimes plus the number of quarters is going to be 78 total coins, right? So often when they ask you, hey, what number, here's the total, but how many of each? Well, we're going to add those up until we get it. Cool. Okay. So now I'm good in, in, I'm in good shape. I actually, these are all lined up. N's are all on the left. D's are in the middle. Q's are on the end with an equal sign and just a number. So we're actually writing this, write this straight into um, all our, um, our matrix, right? So that we can do it. Um, as you write in, I did end up, changing this i did 0.25 times two because we could distribute that in there right so i multiplied that together you need to make sure that you couldn't really write uh you need to get it just so it's a nice coefficient i didn't rewrite the whole equation i thought that'd be a little extra but 0.25 times two is 0.5 so that will change that in here so be careful a little bit um, but otherwise it was ready to go so 0.5 excuse me 0 0.05 0 0.05 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.25 0 0.25 total boom once again bang bang we're just writing out the coefficients i multiplied these two together so that i could get my new coefficient to make these equations different right um but yeah we're just writing these values and the last one well what are the coefficients here one one and one so that's what goes in for each of these so this is one one and one for a total of 78 coins plug it into your calculator change your matrix do the steps once again watch that video if you forget how to use your calculator um, and you should, if you came out to this whole thing, you would end up with 25 nickels, 14 dimes, and 39 quarters. Okay. So that one, the only confusing thing I think was this. Uh, but hopefully that makes some sense if we're doubling the quarters, 2 times Q. Okay. And then definitely the hardest one here is number 3. Um, but we can use our, our brains to figure that out. We'll be okay. It says Mason has, has a collection has a collection of i'm gonna say of in there mason has a collection of 49 stamps 49 cent stamps 20 cent stamps and three cent stamps worth 23 dollars and 55 cents a lot going on there he has 56 total 90 or oh gosh he has 56 total 49 cent and 20 cent stamps okay, we'll, we're gonna draw a line through here we're gonna, we're gonna close this off so that was one sentence because oops well we'll talk about that in a second and then it says the number of three cent stamps is nine more than the number of 20 cent stamps okay so they give us a couple different things in relationship to each other as far as these stamps go and it's definitely not laid out nice and easy like this many stamps this many stamps this is a nice easy one to start but at the same time it's not all quite like that Okay, it says, how many of each does he have? Well, how many of each? Oops, how many of each, right? Well, once again, how many? So that's going to be some interesting things. So our variables are going to be the number of expensive stamps, the number of medium price stamps, and the number of cheap stamps. Once again, if you just did X, Y, Z, that'd be fine. I like to kind of pick ones. If you used um, like big stamps, medium stamps, and little stamps, and you use B and L instead of E and C, it doesn't really matter the variables you're using whatever makes sense to you but that's why we label them out up here so that somebody can kind of read your and know what you're talking about okay um the first one i think is fairly straightforward right just like when we saw nickels dimes and quarters you're gonna have to get the amount of money they're in with our total right? so this one should make some sense this one says hey if i multiply the price for an expensive stamp times the number of expensive stamps and i add that to the price for medium stamps and add that to the number of medium stamps and uh, three cents, 0 0.03, once again, 0 0.03, not 0 .03, 0 0.03 times the number of cheap stamps should give me my total cost or total amount that it's worth. Okay, cool. Now the other two are a little different. The other two say he has 56 total, 
Well, that's going to be equals, right? Total usually talks about an equal sign. So 56 is going to be equal to something. Total, he has how many? 49 cent stamps and 20 cent stamps. So they didn't give us the total for the number of all of the stamps this time. He just gave us the total of 49 and 20 cent stamps, the expensive stamps and the medium stamps. So what we're going to say is I know, and that's why I broke this out because I think it, with that and there, it was a little confusing. I think they should have put this in two sentences. I don't think their writing was terribly clear. So I'm explaining that quick. But he said, he has 56, the number is 56 total of just these two type, types of stamps. So just like before where I said um, N plus D plus Q equals my total, this is almost the same exact thing here, but I'm going to say uh, just uh, E plus M, just the expensive stamps and the medium stamps should equal 56. So he didn't give us, they didn't talk about like the total total. They didn't include the number of cheap stamps, uh, but they did give us information between how many of each is equal to the total, right? And then the number, and I think this is the one that everybody's going to have the most trouble with. It says the number of three cent stamps is nine more than the number of 20 cent stamps. Okay. So let's unpack that a little bit. The number of the number of three cent stamps okay what does that mean well the number of three cent stamps just is c that's what we define this whole variable as the number of three cent stamps c that was we define that okay so we're gonna have c is whenever we see is we think equals so i'm gonna have c equals nine more than wow that was still pretty good with a mouse we're impressed. Nine more than what? Well, nine more than the number of 20 cent stamps. What's the number of 20 cent stamps? 20 cent stamps is M. That's our medium stamps. Okay. So nine more than M. Well, nine more than we should hopefully know just means plus nine. So my equation is going to say C, the number of three cent stamps is equals nine more than plus nine M. M plus nine. Nine more than the number of medium priced stamps. C plus e, C equals M plus nine. Once again, number of three cent stamps, that's just C, cheap stamps. Is equals nine more than, that's where this plus nine comes from, but we always put it at the end. It doesn't really matter. You could have nine plus M here still, but that's usually how I read it. Uh, nine more than what? Well, M. Nine more than the number of medium stamps. So definitely the weirdest one because you have two different equations that we're not really used to seeing here, um, but they should still follow pretty okay. Um, be ready for words like twice. Be ready for words like more than, less than, that kind of thing. Um, true. Okay. But the downside is we can't just jump to our matrix yet because our matrix, if you look at the last two examples we did, this said G's plus S's plus C's equal signs number. Same thing over here when we did it. N's plus D's plus Q's equals number. But if I look at this one, I don't have E's in a row, M's in a row, C's in a row, and numbers in a row. I got variables on both sides of this equation, and mostly just this bottom one is the issue, right? Because I have an M on this side and a C on this side. We need everything on the line. Okay, cool. So if I subtract, oh, I'm a fool. I wrote this out wrong. Oh, I'm going to have to clip that together. Oh, I needed to put my medium beside here. Well, let's just fix it. I make mistakes sometimes, right? Things happen. So um, when we do this, we're subtracting our M over. Right, but we need to write it in the same order. This goes E M C. This says E M. It says plus zero C. You don't see it, right? But plus zero C. Um, so that's why there's a zero here. But in this case, uh, if you come down here, this should say negative M plus C is equal to nine. Uh, because we need these values to be in the same order because it needs to go E, M, C, E, M, C. This should have been E, which is zero, E, M, C. This needed to be 
changed. I put these in the wrong order. Minus down here, plus. That's why you got to be careful. There's a good example of not being careful. Mr. Kleckler, doing this too late at night last night. Um, setting these problems up anyway. So let's try that again. We had, hopefully you followed this part where I wrote that equation, but we needed to move M over so that it was all on the same side so that we matched more like this top equation. If I move that over, make sure you keep them in order. E, M, C, E, M, kind of C, it's not there, zero C. And then it needs to go E, well, zero, E. But then minus M, I should have slid this over, minus M plus C, have them in the same order. E, M, C, E, M, C, E, not there, M, C, cool. So then when you put them in here, E, M, C equals number, E, M, C, there was no C in this equation, it also with zero and that's okay, e equals number. And then E, once again, no E in that equation, zero. Um, M was negative one, C was one. Plug those in, follow your directions for plugging those in and you should get these values here, uh, 40, 49 cent stamps, our expensive stamps was E40. 16 was our 20 cent stamps. Our middle stamps are M and 25 was our uh, three cent stamps or our cheap stamps, C was equal to 25. So be careful with those. Make sure you write them in order because even I make mistakes, right? Um, even I did that. So that's the, probably the easiest thing you can make a mistake on. Make sure you're writing it in the same order if you're gonna plug it into this matrix and solve it. Okay. Um, We'll mostly practice these first two examples today, um, and then I can make another example video or two for something like this last problem uh, today for you to look at tomorrow. And then we'll probably assess on this on Thursday, maybe Friday, but Thursday. Um, that's pretty realistic for us. I'll give you some practice, um, and um, we'll check some work either tomorrow or Thursday. Um, but Make sure you're plugging into your calculator once again. If you forget how to use your calculator, watch the video right next to this one in Empower um, and make sure you get your assignment done so that uh, you'll be successful this week. Okay. Thank you all. Ooh.